we're doing part two of um, how to become a barber. Um, once again, we're at the Cherokee Barber Shop here based in North Cross, in North Cross, Georgia. Um, what we're going to be talking to Darnell about today, we're going to be talking about some of the tools that you use to become a barber. So Darnell, um, can you just give us a little bit of um, knowledge on some of the tools that you use? What, what are yes. some of the clippers and what they do? Okay, these are what we call the 76ers. 76ers? 76ers. This is a rotary motor and it has a detachable blade. You get a close up on that? You spin it around for us? This is a very effective clipper mm -hmm. when you're cutting um, straight hair, when you're, when you're cutting even on overs, it, gives you, it develops speed. Okay. But it, it's quite, quite. These clippers run you from $130 and each blade runs you from $22 to $30. And close up on that. It, there's nine of them. Wow. So you can kind of imagine this whole set with all the blades and the clippers will run you almost $500. Wow, wow. So that, those are very expensive, huh? Yes, yes they yeah. are. You gotta take care of them. Yeah, you just apply the blade and you turn it off. Very, very good clipper. Okay. But if you, if you can't afford that, this is your standard fading clipper called a Fade Masters. So okay. A lot of barbers use these. These mm -hmm. run you about 80 bucks. These run you about 80 bucks. And um, these are just the standard uh, fade masters that you can cut. Okay. Then you got the wall, the wall seniors, which is cost effective. These cost you about fifty bucks. Fifty dollars, huh? Start now. Yeah. Spin it around for us. Let's see. I, see I sure thing. can. The slick low design. And the name of that again is? It's called the wall seniors. Okay. And that again is for? It's uh, for fifty dollars. You can get these for fifty, fifty dollars, sixty dollars in, in that, that price. Okay. And then you have your basic edges. Which, you know, I have three pairs because they get hot. You definitely want to invest in these. These will run you about $49 as well. And who's that by? These are by, made by Andy. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so y'all get an idea of what it is that you know. We got the Andy, the Fade Masters, the 76s. These are terminology. So when you try to Google it or, or look it up, we got the Wall Seniors. Uh -huh. And I, right here, you got the, uh, I have the um, Fast Features. These made by Oyster. Right, right. And these are about $79. Now, they're gonna, before you guys start Google, um, asking me, sending me a whole bunch of crazy emails asking me, what is that box for? Um, Darnell, explain to them what, what that box is this for. This box is very important and I would require all barbers to invest in it. It's highly expensive, but it's an ultraviolet sanitary ray that sanitizes your clippers. In the right. That you cut somebody that has HIV, ringworms, or any spreadable microorganism. Any transmittable it, diseases. Yes, when right. You, when you put your uh, clippers in this this case, the organisms, the light of it will will uh, sanitize that, and you won't transfer it to another client. It's very very. So basically, important. the ultraviolet light will uh, kill any um, possible transmittable diseases, bacteria, or what have you. That is correct. Okay, now this jar right here, what is what is that for? This is the barbicide jar. Okay. What you do is you only put clean implements mm -hmm. into this jar. When I say implements, I mean combs, scissors, things of that nature. You will wash them with soap and water. If you notice, my jar is empty. But if you see other barber shops, you see them, they got their, their uh, combs and stuff sitting in there, which that is incorrect. That's right. why school is very important. Now you see that guys, um, Donnell takes a lot of time here at the Cherokee Barber Shop based out of Norcross, <laughs> Norcross, Georgia, to uh, provide you a sanitary experience where you don't have to worry about getting a dirty haircut. For all of you guys with the bumps in the back of your neck, you know what I'm talking about. We don't have to go there. So um, yeah, that's very important and that, that, that is something that is appreciated. Now um, let's talk about some of these um, chemicals that we use in yeah. products. <clears throat> right here is just a next standard brush, the brush that wipes the, the client off when the hair gets on there. Okay. Very inexpensive. The talcum powder is very good and very necessary. So after you finish the, the, the cut, you can put the talcum powder on the brush and remove any excess hair that is on the client. Nice. Very, okay. Very good and important. This is a five-in-one disinfectant spray. It also cools it, it moves it, and it sanitizes it at the same time. So each between each haircut, before you start another client, you must spray this and, and, and disinfect all your tools and implements before each and every haircut. It's very important. Okay. Right here, you just got your, your uh, oil sheen. After you do the haircut, you just spray the oil sheen on the client. They got different flavors. What, what brand is that? This is uh, made by Proline Barber Select. Oh, okay. And they got different flavors for you, different things that smell good, and, and you know, it's your personal preference on what kind of oil you need. Okay, flavors meaning fragrances? Fragrances, yes. Okay. And then you have your alcohol, which I need to uh, re-up on mine. 
is uh, just a standard spray bottle that you put the antiseptic in there. And you don't want to put alcohol in the skin because alcohol is not good for the skin. You want to put an antiseptic like a cool breeze or sea breeze. Okay. So you're dealing with this chemical on, on, um, on the skin. And when you go to school, you'll find out what's good for the skin and what's not good for the skin. You know, it's very common. You hear about um, barbers that are inexperienced saying, okay, we're going to throw some alcohol on you or whatever. I mean, that that's not good, you're saying. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is 99% um, I support. I, so I don't know the terminology, but it's got 99% alcohol in it, and it's not good for the skin when you put it on your skin. Wow. Septic is what we put on the skin. That's the correct terminology when you learn what to put on the skin when you when you do an um, after your haircut. It's not alcohol. Okay. All right. Well, let's go further. All right. Then for all, everybody will pick up the razor. This is a razor cream that I use when I'm doing a razor shave for the older gentlemen. Or bring that a little closer in so they can see. It has a vitamin E cream on there, so uh, okay. it, uh, it enhances the shade. It, it's very good. You can use different things uh, when you learn in school that, that you can apply for the shade. But this, this is a very good substance. Okay. And you can learn the razor in school. This is just the cocoa butter. I also use this for the shade. And, uh, Bring it a little closer. Yeah. I use it for... Okay. If you use the clippers and you put a shave on a person's face, mm -hmm. you don't want, sometimes their face will be irritable or they'll be dry. You can put cocoa and butter on their face and you can send them. It, it acts as a, a coating for the face. It's good for the skin. Moisturizer in other words? Yeah, good moisturizer for the face. Okay. And also, um, you will a vitamin E cream, mm -hmm. which is very good because when you learn how to do facials, for these young men, after you shave them, you can give them a mini facial, and that's a, a, a product and a service that you can you can charge extra for the haircut. So see all your men before you go and say, oh, I don't want to be metrosexual. It's a good thing to take care of your face, and Darnell also provides that for you. So um, if you definitely want to get uh, looking good and, and ready to go out for the night and, and, and impress your ladies and or your young lady or wife, uh, Darnell will take care of that for you also. So okay. definitely come here and he'll provide it for you. Now, What's this right here? It looks like a shaving cream or yeah, heat or this something? This is a, a, called an electric lathericer. It's another form of the shaving cream. Okay, one more time. That's what? An electric lathericer. What it does, you put liquid soap in there and it turns that liquid soap into foam that you can put onto the man's face for the razor shave. Oh, okay. You just press the button and it's not on right now, but you can, uh, you can invest in this. Uh, it's pretty expensive, maybe $100 for a good um, unit. But it saves time and it comes out with warm lather for the face and you can apply for the razor and it just speeds your process up a little bit. Very nice. All right, let's um, do a quick quick rundown on the barber chair. <laughs> yes, the, barber, the barber chair. Barbers, you got to know your chair. You got you to gotta, you gotta know your chair. Okay. This is the standard barber chair. You got the lever on this side. Where you okay. Can lean, you can lean the chair back. Can you demonstrate that? Yes. Back for the razor shave, okay. And you can lock it down, and then you can close it. And how you pump it back up and forth is here. Important, guys. Anytime a customer gets in your chair, you want to lock the chair so you don't get sued. If he steps on this thing and his chair spins, and he falls. Wow. It's very important that you lock this chair when, when the clients get in and out of the chair. So okay. If you the service, you want to lock the chair. So therefore, now you have a yes. So. Another thing most barber shops will have, some won't have, but what we have in this particular shop is an air blower. And you will find these at uh, some of the barber schools now when you go to school. There's just a blower that blows the hair off after you finish in the client. But you want to be careful and cautious of you don't want to blow the hair next to another client that's sitting here or next there. So you just want to blow it back out, you know, in front of you and then you can drape the client off and you can finish it. Up. Okay. All right here is your standard cape that I got draped over him. And barbers, you want to make sure that you uh, get a cape that's large enough for, for your clients to drape completely over. They got different sizes, different colors for your preference. The barbershop might have a standard, you know, uniform for that. So that, that's something to look for. Okay. And also you got your barber smock, which I don't have my smock on today, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it on for you. This is a smock that goes over your clothing. Keep your clothing from checking. They got different colors, different styles. You know, something that'll, that'll fit your, you know, your personality. But sometimes the barber owner will have a, a specific jacket that you might wear for the shop. So it all depends on what shop it is. But that's generally in a nutshell what it is that you need to, to start yourself as a barber. I got the tools that I showed you, the, the cape we went over, the chair. So you want to be conscientious of the things that you need after you get out of barber school. Get your budget together because those things you will need your budget together. There won't be no financial aid for that. You have to buy it yourself and just pace yourself and, and get your clippers, you know, in a timely manner so you can really be an, an enhanced barber. And a barber is only as good as his tools.
Um, is there anything that you would like to leave the public with? Um, goals and your ambitions, remember, are come from your heart. And it is a cliche and a formula for success. Where preparation meets opportunity, you're successful. You're in preparation right now. Don't let opportunity pass you by and you'll, you'll, you'll do all right. I just want to show you what the cut looks like. This is part two of uh, me and Derek showing you uh, the steps that you need to take to start a business. And I just want to show you the apprentice look of, 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 of what a fade looks like. A good, well-groomed customer. Put the razor line on him. He's looking good. I tell you, the, the, the haircut is like skin therapy. You see the smile on his face? Ah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Another side view for all of y'all. That's a nice cut. Derek, I appreciate you coming in this morning, man. So give me some knowledge of what you do, and I hope that we can uh, give the everybody out there some knowledge on what I do. So uh, I, I want to thank you out. Appreciate you too, man. All right. Well, you heard it from the man. All right. So uh, this is, uh, once again, is Derek Bingham. And um, we're going to wrap this up for the Cherokee Barbershop based out of here in Norcross, Georgia. That's for right. Darnell and Derek, we're out. Peace.